Hello, this is a brief demo of the lab number one system. We want to start off with the tank drained, so it's completely empty. The overload, it's in the overload condition and it's stopped. It's a good idea to actually press each of these push buttons at least one time, but I want to start off with it stopped and in the overload state. And what I'm going to do next is press this toggle and that indicates that the motor is not in the overload state and then I'm going to press start. And when that happens, the pump motor gets energized to allow water to flow into the tank, but you'll see that these two sensors are indicating that there's no water in there. So the way we make this system work is we're gonna use this slider and we're going to increase the level by moving this slider up. And as soon as it gets to about a level of two, it turns on the lower sensor, but nothing changes as far as the output is concerned, not until we get near the top of the tank. So we're going up, 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 until we get to the upper sensor and then the pump motor should go off or de-energize and the drain valve should energize to allow the liquid to flow out of the tank. Now since the liquid is flowing out of the tank we have to simulate that the tank is draining. Okay I'm going to go to the bottom it drains the drain valve goes off when we get to the bottom and the pump motor comes back on so everything seems to be working properly but let's do a few more tests. So let's say I'm filling the tank, pump motor's on, and we're halfway into the system and an overload occurs, okay? And I generate that by pressing this toggle button. Overload occurs, the system is off, all of the output field devices are de-energized. So the pump motor is de-energized and the drain valve is de-energized. So it's going to have the water held at its current position. It's not gonna drain, it's not gonna fill. So let's say the overload is removed. So I click on this. Well, the system should not restart until I press the start button. And it does restart. Now the tank's about halfway, but it remembers, be, it remembers that it was filling and continues to fill until we get to the top. Okay, we're at the top and now we're coming back down because it's draining and I have an overload occur. Okay, system goes off, all of the field devices are turned off, and the only way to get this system restarted is to remove the overload and press start. Okay, notice that the tank is about the same level, but a while ago when we had an overload occur, it returned with the pump motor on because it was filling. Now it returns with the drain valve energized because it was draining, and it continues to drain as we go down in down, down, and it turns off at that point. So you wanna make sure your system works that way. When we get to the top, it's uh, going to start draining. When we get to the bottom, it's going to fill. And anytime we stop the system, it should turn off or de-energize the pump and the drain valve. And when we turn the system back on, it remembers where it was. So in this case, it was filling. Go to the top, come down, stop, and start, in this case it was draining. So that's what I'm gonna be looking for when you do the demo. All right, here I wanna show you how the HMI is linked to the program. So I'm gonna start with this stop button, and I've actually turned the system off, turned the HMI off by pressing the stop button up here, and I'm moving the stop push button out of the way, and uh, I'm clicking on this button, and then I'm gonna right click and go to connections, and it shows me that this is called a momentary push button and it's tied to the main program stop tag. So when I press and release that button, it causes the tag in the program to go true or false. This is the start push button. So I'm just gonna right click, go to connections, and it tells me that that start push button is linked or tied to the start. If I look at some other information here. It tells me that when I go to state one, there's actually no text, but the color will change. And at state zero, um, that's the back color. Let's go to state one again. So the colors change as you run the program. For the pump motor, there's actually a little graphic, a rectangle. I'm going to right click on it and go to animation. And what happens is the color changes based on the value of the pump motor. And the color is either going to be a light gray when it's off 
or green, a brighter green when it's on. And that's called the color animation. So the program causes that point in the graphic to change. The same thing is true for the drain valve. There's an animation there. And if I go to visibility and click on color, that may have been off the screen temporarily, but same thing here. It's called drain valve. It's gray when it's off, green when it's on. There's a toggle push button. If I go to properties or connections, it tells me that it's called a maintained push button and it's connected or linked to the motor overload. Here you can see the settings for the maintain push button. When it's in uh, value of one, it'll say motor okay. And when it goes to state zero, which means that there has been an overload, the text will show overload. And it does say somewhere that it is a maintained type of push button graphic. You can see that for the upper sensor, it's actually a global variable, and I'll talk about that briefly. But uh, when it's off or equal to zero, it'll be gray, and when it's on, it'll be green. So this is called color animation. The same thing exists for the bottom one. So if I go to the lower sensor, right click, go to animation, color, and then you'll see that it's tied to a variable or a tag called lower sensor. Gray when it's off, green when it's on. All right, this HMI graphic is actually called a vertical slider. And there are two important parts to the vertical slider. What the value should be when it's at its minimum down at the base and what its value should be when it's at the top or the maximum. The variable is called level. It's a global or controller variable, so it can be seen by all programs. And what happens is that when it's at its minimum, okay, and this is called an offset, so I'm calling the minimum zero. And as I go up in the graphic, okay, so I move this slider up, it goes to a more negative value. And that really relates to the pixel position on the screen. The more negative value in this case is minus 336. This graphic is actually a graphic that's uh, 640 by 480. And the origin for those pixels is up at the top left. So that would be zero, zero. And the bottom right, if I were to drag it to the bottom right, this would be 640 and 480. And the top right would be 640, zero. That's the Y value of zero. And down at the bottom left would have an X value of zero and a Y value of, sorry, an X value of 480 and a Y value of zero at that position. Now the last HMI graphic has to do with these text messages up here where it says system running and system off. These are what are called visible or invisible text. So the way that that works the way it works is that there's a variable called run. And when that variable goes true, it makes this, this text called system running, it makes that visible. And when it goes false, it will be invisible. And then we have the opposite occurring for the system off. And I'll show you that. So the way that this one works is when the system variable called run is true, this is an invisible. And when it's false, it's visible. So that's, that's why when run is true, you'll see the text system running. When run is false, you'll see the text system run. And you must use that variable name so that it works with the HMI. Thank you. All right, this is the video and it'll be part two of lab one demo. So I have a very simple program, and that's the way you want to start with. It's a very, very simple program just to test out your system. But I want to check it for any errors, and I'm going to do that by clicking on this Verify Routine. Down here it tells me zero errors, zero warnings. If you have any, that's where you'll find them. And the, the next step I will take is to download my program. So I come over here, click on Download. You'll see a pop-up message, click on download. It'll download. You will get this pop-up and click yes to that. 
And when you do, what you'll notice is that all three of these lights turn on, run, controller OK, and IO OK, as well as remote run turns on. If you don't get the green bars after downloading, one of the things you may have to do is click on this menu and click uh, run mode. Sometimes when you've had errors and you download, it doesn't automatically go into run mode. So you have to manually do that. So I'm starting off with the tank system halfway and the lower sensor is um, closed and the upper sensor is off. That's why this examine if open is true because the upper sensor is false and the lower sensor is true. So we're gonna start off by just coming down to the bottom here and you'll notice that when the tank is empty, the pump motor is on. And when I fill the tank, the pump goes off. Okay, so on at the bottom, off at the top. So I have two types of connections here that uh, this run is being controlled by a seal in. So if I press the stop button, run goes false. If I press the start, it goes true. If I have an overload, and I click on that button to simulate an overload, the run goes off, click on it again, and the run goes back on. So just verify that all of the, when you press this button, for example, press it and hold it, the start goes, or sorry, the stop goes false when you press it. Here, the start should go true when you press it. Here, when this is green, the motor overload should be true. When you press it, it should go false. So just verify that all those things are working. When you bring the slider down to the bottom, you're simulating that the tank is empty. When the tank is empty, this little green icon should come on indicating that the pump motor is on. When it's full, it's going to come on, uh, or sorry, the pump motor is gonna go off. Now, this is just a very simple demo program for lab number one, so it's in no way the complete program. Just wanna show you a bit of how some of the program works. The other thing I wanna show you is what's happening in the background. There's actually two programs here. There's the uh, program that's running this part of my code, but there's another program that you don't have to write, but it's there. It's called Level and Sensors. And it's a program to actually manipulate what's happening with the upper and the lower sensor. Now, these are this is a different program and it uses some real values and it uses a comparison statement. And what it's doing is comparing the value of this slider, okay, the value of this slider, and you can see it updating on the left-hand panel as I go up. So let's say I'm about halfway, and you'll see that the value of level is five. When I'm up at the top, it goes to 10. When I'm down at the bottom, it goes to zero. And what this program does is when level is at the bottom, it turns off both of these sensors to do the simulation. When it gets to above two, it turns on the bottom sensor. When it goes above eight, it turns on the top sensor, all right? So the next thing to look at is all of the tags that are involved. So our program, the main program tags are here. So this can be very useful when you're monitoring what's happening. It's showing you what drain control, drain valve, all of those are equal to. So as I move the slider up and down, you'll see some of those variables change, okay? Because the program is running. And uh, for example, the uh, pump motor, which is right here, it's on right now. But if I go up to the top, you'll see that this is off. And this is a very good place to go to for troubleshooting. It's showing you the, the level. Well, actually it's not because I don't have it tied to anything in the main program. But it's showing you all of the digital values. So that's called, the uh, local tags, okay? But we can also go to the controller tags because there are three controller tags that are being used here. One of them is called level, and that's coming from this slider, and you can see that real value changing. All of the other values are Boolean, and you can also see the level upper and level lower sensors and what they're equal to. So if I come down here, they're both zeros. Halfway, the lower is true, the upper is false. I go up to the top it's that condition. The other thing that's very useful when you're troubleshooting your program is to hover over variables. So for example, if I want to verify that the stop is true, well, I'll see the green bars there, but you should be able to uh, hover over the variable as well. 
Okay, and here's how you go about hovering over the variables to see the state. So right here, and, and this sometimes doesn't work for me, but here we go. So it's a Boolean type tag. Its current value is zero. And the scope, which means where that variable uh, works within, or which program, in this case, that variable is tied to the main program. You'll see that the upper and lower sensor are tied to the controller scope because it can be seen by the controller and any program, okay? Both the lab one template and the level and sensors program. And it's currently equal to a one. So that's why it's true for an examine if closed, but false for an examine if open. So let's just try hovering over this one. Sometimes you have to click the mouse for it to work. And sometimes it just doesn't work well for me. Oh, there it goes. Sometimes it just takes a little bit of time to pop up. Try hovering it again. We'll hover over here. Let's try that hover again. It's, it's kind of finicky, so um, I usually come down from the top. And yeah, it's not working for me now. It might have something to do with that I'm recording the video because when I stop it, it does work. Okay, it should work for you. Okay, or you can also go to the uh, local tags and see their current state right there. So that's where I can test the stop button. So you can, or start button. So you can see that the start went true when I pressed it. So it's just a way to verify that it's communicating. Here, the system is uh, equal to a one for the stop. And now it goes to zero. Let's look at the motor overload. It changes its state right there. So that's a good place to go to when you're trying to troubleshoot your program. I hope some of this helps. Thank you.